Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanted to do a Q&A of all the jail questions that you guys have asked me. Of course, if you have more questions, just leave me a comment, let me know, and then I can do a part two if you guys want. I've had a lot of people ask me about what happens if you have a chronic illness and you're in jail, or if you're in severe pain or you need certain medical equipment. How that works, they send you to medical and they provide what they can. Now, all jails are different, so they're all going to offer different things. But remember, you're still in jail, so no matter what they do, it's still going to be uncomfortable. I do know that there are a lot of people that don't get their meds that need meds. There are people that don't need meds that get meds. And then there are a lot of people that are unmedicated that don't even know they need meds. I'm not blaming the jails. It's just the system as a whole. Nothing is set up the way it should be. If you needed to be hooked up to a machine of some sort, you would have to go to medical. From my experience, they didn't have anyone in a cell with machinery. They would keep you in medical. I made a video about being disabled in jail, how that would work. Normally, they would have pod workers or the trustees help out in that pod. But it wasn't like an overnight thing. It was so many hours, it was their job. So they would help assist them and do whatever they needed to do throughout the day. But other than that, they are in a pod just like everybody else, but they're in a pod together. Now, of course, there are some people that are mixed in. It just depends on what your disability is. Let's say, for example, you are disabled on paper on the outside of jail. You have, you know, doctor, you have documents and you go to jail, let's say you need a bottom bunk or you need to be on the bottom floor. Even if you have your disability papers, you're still not guaranteed to get that. So again, it just depends on the jail. Could even depend on the CO. It could depend on if they have your paperwork, even if they do, what's available, what cells they can give you. Just everything plays a role in it. Not all jails are just horrible and they're gonna be like, we don't care, but there are some that aren't gonna care and they'll put you where they say they can put you or what they have available. Any kind of medical, dental, anything like that in jail is gonna be a struggle, no matter what it is. It could be just a toothache, anything. You're gonna struggle in there. Mental health, addiction, anything like that, it's gonna be a struggle in jail. They do charge inmates to go to the doctor or dentist, charge for medication. Of course, it's not the same price as it is on the outside because they know they would never get that money. So they charge, I don't know how they base the rate, but they charge a certain amount. Say your family puts $20 on your commissary every week. If you owe medical $20, they're going to take that $20 from your commissary. That's just how they do it. They make sure they get their money. Let's say you owe $100, they'll continue to take whatever money you have out of your commissary. Before you get to spend it, they'll go straight to it and pay your medical off. That's how they did it where I was. Inmates still have to pay, and yes, it is cheaper, but you know, you don't have a job, so you're not making income. So it's, it's still just as hard because you're trying to pay for something without money. So yes, it's always gonna be a struggle. Being in any kind of pain is gonna be a struggle in jail. Even if they give you something, it's gonna be over the counter usually. If you have to go to the hospital, that's a different situation. But inside the jail, I know they can only do so much. Let's talk about jail food. Breakfast, we usually had like these pancakes. They were frozen pancakes, like maybe like a piece of sausage or egg. Sometimes we'd have cereal or a waffle. They'd give you like one waffle. They always put a piece of cake. I don't know what it was with the cake. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We always had cake all the time on every tray. It just depends on the jail. It's gonna be different every morning and it's gonna be different at every jail. Lunchtime was the same at every jail. It was either a peanut butter sandwich or it was like bologna and cheese. That's all I've ever seen unless you had a certain diet. And that would be like, you tell them you're allergic to bologna or you don't eat meat, you might get an egg salad sandwich or something like that. It just depends on what the jail has. They're all different, but that's what I've seen, like egg salad or tuna salad. What they could do is give you a, a peanut butter sandwich instead of the bologna and cheese. And then usually they might give you a bag of chips or a piece of fruit like orange or just something like that and then drinks they would always give us these powder it looked
looks like the single pack Kool-Aids. They would give you one of those to put in water and the water we got from the sink. Some gels give you a cup. If they didn't, you had to buy one from commissary. And I just remember we would walk around with our cups all day long. We would walk around and drink coffee, water, juice, whatever, all day long in our cups. If you had a cup or if the jail gave you a cup. Some jails, you didn't get a cup and we had to use what we could to make a cup to sh just to drink water. Dinner was either slop, they served that a lot, and that was just, it looked like they took a bunch of different meals and just mixed it all together. Nobody knew what was in it. We called it mystery meat. We called a lot of stuff mystery meat in jail. Some stuff would be molded. It was just horrible. So don't go to jail, guys. Do your best to not go to jail. Be aware of your surroundings, who you're with, please, because trust me, it's just horrible in there. I remember one jail would have a pizza night, but the pizza was like, it reminded me of school pizza. I don't know if it was as good as school pizza, but that's what it reminded me of. We had a burger, but I don't know what kind of meat it was. It didn't look like a regular cheeseburger or anything. Beans, lots of beans, lots of beans. And then cake, of course. Green beans or black beans or baked beans or just beans, lots of beans. A lot of you asked me about the different diets. If you can't eat certain things, you're allergic to certain things or religion, they usually accommodate for all of it. Now, of course, it would be hard to keep up with that many inmates and their daily diet of each meal, but I'm sure they try their best. I'm not saying all jails, but there's got to be some that care a little bit or a couple of people that work there that care. But of course, there are a lot that don't care and you get what you get and you try to make the best of it. So if you can't eat or won't eat something, let's say you get a sandwich and it has bologna, if you have to take the bologna off or you have to trade it to get something else. But there's always a way to trade or hustle or do something so you could hopefully get something to eat. You guys always ask me about periods in jail. I've made tons of videos. I've tried to explain every scenario because really it's just a horrible place to have it. It really is. It's already hard to deal with that on the outside of jail. Being a woman with the cramps and the emotions. We're already dealing with all that on the outside, but on the inside, it's just, it's so much harder. You're emotional and the pain, your cramps, it's hard, especially laying on a metal bed, trying to get comfortable, good luck. So yes, periods are really hard in there. Not being able to get pads and even the pads you do get are just, they don't last. Yes, be grateful you've got something, but at the same time, it doesn't last and you're still gonna struggle one way or another. A lot of you guys asked me about my bunkies in jail. I made a video that talked about some of them. For the most part, I had pretty decent bunkies. I was very lucky that I didn't have too many issues, arguments or anything like that. Everybody was pretty cool, pretty laid back. I had the one bunkie that scammed me, I told you guys that, but the rest of them were cool. I mean, we just made the best of a really bad situation. No, not everyone is nice in jail, but no, not everyone is mean. But just because someone's being nice to you doesn't mean they won't flip a switch and fight you. <laughs> That's the thing about jail is you can meet the nicest people in the world, but if you mess with them, if you do something wrong to them, yeah, please expect a fight. I feel like whatever vibe you give off is what you're going to get for the most part. So if you're someone that is, I don't know you guys, because I went through my crying stage, my getting clean, my misery, my woe is me. I went through all the phases. Because once you're in there long enough and your mind is clear and you go through all the stages, then you start to get to your normal self-ish. I mean, the best you can while you're in jail. Then you try to do things to keep yourself busy so that time goes by faster. We tried to make the best of it and try to better ourselves the best way we can with what we had in jail. A lot of you have asked about libraries in jail. I have a law library. Now, not, it's not easy to go to the law library. You have to fill out a form and wait, and if they allow you to go, you don't just get to say, hey, can I go, and then they take you. It's never that easy. I have seen a book cart that they would have one of the inmates push through the pod and let you check out one book or two books at a time, whatever it was. And then a different jail had a book cart that stayed in the pod but you can only have one book out at a time. So people were reading books, trading books, stuff like that. You guys also ask about like the scariest thing I've seen in jail. Scary, I'll tell you, it was sad and it was wrong, but seeing someone have a mental health breakdown right in front of you 
and all the COs barging in and throwing them, slamming them down to the ground. And this person, they're not thinking clearly, they need help. And I feel like traumatizing them does not make it any better. You don't even have to go through that to get slammed down on the ground. So being on edge in jail, any wrong look, wrong turn, too fast, anything could cause you to get slammed onto the ground. And that is scary. Some jails have pepper spray. I mean, that's scary. Sitting in that jail cell alone, getting clean without any help. I remember thinking that I wasn't going to make it and nobody's going to know. I'm in here by myself. I have no way for anyone to even know if I'm breathing or anything. I was scared. I was really, really scared. They check on you, but it's not that often. I mean, they check your blood pressure. But for me, that was very scary because I'm like, if anything happens to me, who's going to know? I don't have a cellmate. I have, I have nothing. It's just me in here. Getting hit on by a CO, that's scary because you could very easily run into the one that if you say no to is not going to accept that as an answer. So that's very scary. You just don't know. You don't know the situations you're in. You don't know. You don't only have to worry about other inmates. You worry about the COs. You have to worry about everything. And I know people think, oh, it's jail. You you know, we're, the inmates are the only ones in the wrong. But no, people that work in the jail do stuff too. And you just don't know who is who when you go there. So it's all scary. Everything is scary. Not knowing when you're going to leave is scary. Not knowing how long you're going to be there is scary. Just everything is scary about jail. Yes, eventually you get used to it, but even if you get into a routine, you don't get used to it. Like, you, it's jail. It's not comforting. It's, ugh, it's jail, y'all. It's jail. The hole. You guys ask about the hole, the shoe, isolation, all that. Lock, even lockdown, when they lock you down in your cell, you don't get commissary. When you are being disciplined, you don't get commissary. You get a shower like once or twice a week, even less freedom. And you're in a room the size of a closet. It's torture. It really is. And it's supposed to be 14 days max. But I've seen tons of documentaries right here on YouTube where there are lawsuits because they've left people in the hole for so long. And it's just crazy to me. Like, this stuff is being like broadcasted and nothing is still being done. So if they can get away with that and it's public, imagine what they're getting away with that's not public. The whole, you can, you can lose your mind in there. You really can. And relationships, I made a video about all the relationship stuff. Yes, it's always drama. It's best to just stay out of it no matter what. I do not date women, so I was okay, but it doesn't mean that there's still not going to be drama or them try to bring you into it. I will tell you, I think some people are just bored and pick fights or think it's funny or they're immature or whatever. You know, we're not all on the same page in life. I get it. Some people just like to fight. Some people, that's their coping mechanism. It's just, there's many different reasons. But I definitely have a whole video about mental health and relationships and commissary. I have tons of jail videos on this page too, if you guys want to check those out, that talks all about all that stuff. What else was scary for me was going from one state to another in the middle of the night. That's scary when there's a couple of inmate women and male officers driving us. Anything could have happened. And what could we do? We're handcuffed. That was scary. Getting released in the middle of the night, which I've talked about that. That was scary. Because anything could happen, you guys. Back in the day, I never thought anything could happen to me. Oh, I'm strong. You know, they can't find me. They can't catch me. They can't mess with me. All that crazy stuff. I thought in my mind, it'll never be me. Please know, it can happen to anyone. Anything can happen at any time. So be careful because the reality is it's very scary out there. Hygiene, I'm going to do a whole video on just all the hygiene stuff, like what, what they sell, what you have, what you don't have, all that stuff. I'm going to do a whole video on that. But for right now, I'll just tell you that it's very limited. It's very expensive. What you get is not much. You try to stretch it the best way you can. Sometimes you just have to take a water shower, but you do what you can to survive in jail. A lot of you guys ask me about animals in jail. I have seen there is a jail that does like a pet program or like a trainer program for cats and dogs. There's a jail that has emotional support animals. And it, this isn't for every inmate. It's I don't know how you qualify for it, but 
Only certain inmates get to do this. People will find a mouse and keep it or like a lizard or a spider or something like that. It sounds crazy, but when you're in jail, you're very lonely. I've seen a couple of videos on social media of like men in prison find these little kittens and I guess there's cats, kittens everywhere. I mean, even on the prison yard. You guys were asking me about being blind or deaf in jail. Of course, it's going to be harder. They're going to have to try to accommodate the best way they can. Even if you speak another language, they're going to get you a translator. It's not going to be comfortable. Again, it's jail. Now, some jails don't care, but some will accommodate and do what they can. Same thing with wheelchairs, you know, having someone push your wheelchair if you are unable to push it yourself. A few of you asked me if the uniform you're wearing doesn't fit you anymore, what happens, or if you get a hole in it, what happens. But it's the same as everything else. Now, if it's too small on you, they'll give you a bigger one. But if you say it's too big, they don't care. I remember one time in jail, they gave me these, I don't remember what size they were. Not only were they big, but they were really long and they were telling everybody not to step on the pants. But I'm like, okay, I'm short. I'm like 5'3". I'm like, you guys gave me um, too big. So of course they're gonna, if they're already long and they're big, they're gonna be extra long and you can't roll them up. So I'm like, how am I supposed to, what do y'all want me to do? I ended up having to wait till laundry day and I got a size smaller, but you're not gonna get any that are like skin tight. They're not gonna allow you to wear that because they don't want, you to draw any attention to yourself to have the men or any other women looking at you like that. So they're not gonna let you wear skin tight clothes in there. So as far as the uniform, it's gonna be your size or a little bit bigger. They don't care. As long as it doesn't fall off of you, you're wearing it. But yeah, that's what they do. Um, if it rips or something like that, definitely you can try to get a new one hopefully they don't try to charge you for it and say you did it if you've seen my videos if you start your cycle in your pants you know they're not in a hurry to bring you new ones laundry day we usually had it once a week some places have it twice a week it just depends and you get two uniforms i'm gonna wrap this video up for now you guys let me know any other questions you have we can do a part two and again, I have other videos. I have tons of videos. I know you guys are interested in the jail videos and what goes on in there. It's the unknown. But just know, jail is horrible, you guys. It is horrible. It's not somewhere you want to go. It's just not. So do your best to stay out of jail and do good things in life. And just stay on the right path. But thanks for hanging out with me today. See you guys.